Welcome to Money in the Air, the music podcast about neighboring rights, the royalties you earn from the public performance of your recordings and the business of music in general. Brought to you by IFR, the International Association for Artists and Rights Holders. I'm Andrew, a royalty consultant helping artists to collect on their value. Hi, I'm Gina Deacon. I work for Absolute Rights Management and I work with record labels and artists to ensure we claim the royalty income due to them. I'm Stacey Haber and I'm from Inside Baseball Music Publishing. Hi, welcome back to Money in the Air, the music podcast by IFR, that's ifr.co.uk, where it's all about neighboring rights. And today we're going to talk about the non-featured performer. For us in the UK, it's collected by PPL. In the US, it is not. Andrew, you want to tell us who does collect it? One of the organizations, or the organization rather, that collects on income for non-featured performers is called the AFM. And the AFM was set up as a fund to collect on this income type. The AFM fund is here to collect on income for non-featured performers. And you would do so, you would go onto their website to see if they've collected any receipts, which we're going to go more deeply into today. It's more than just a royalty collecting society. It is the union for musicians in the U.S. So the fund was set up by regulation, and the fund is here to make sure that all of our non-featured performers are getting paid out. So it's a way that session musicians are ultimately going to receive a cut of the income that's generated every single year. The AFM sag after fund is just one bit of the union itself, or the three unions. That's correct. So who gets non-featured income? With the AFM, the fund is a specific area within the Musicians Union that collects on not only sound recording income, but audiovisual, and then also orchestral works as well. So they have numerous functions, but their main duty is to make sure that the non-featured performers, meaning you are not the recording artist, but you've contributed to a recording in some shape or form or an orchestral work, they're there to make sure that you are getting paid. They administer three different types of funds, the first of which is for sound recordings, second of which is for audiovisual, third of which is for symphonic works. Gina, is it the same for PPL, those three same types? So with PPL, pay for non-featured artists. So a non-featured artist is an Andrew said is an artist who's not prominently featured on a recording. That's a session musician, backup vocalist, guitarist, keyboards, and so on. And they will get much lower percentage than the main artist. And with PPL in the UK, you can only claim for one contribution role that you've made. So if you've performed on vocals, you've performed on keyboards, you've performed on guitar, you will only be paid in the UK for one role. It's different in other parts of the world? Yes. Despite in the UK, we say that you'll only get paid for one role you should ensure that you enter the details of all your contributions because in various different territories that does differ so again we're going back to if you play the guitar keyboards and backing vocals for example then please do list all three because in certain territories Germany for example they will pay out for more than one contribution so list absolutely everything here in the US you can only claim and be a participant is how they identify a unique contributor for each non-featured performer. So if you yourself are the producer or you're the triangle player or you're the background vocalist, which is an entirely subset of the sound recording at the AFM, you can only claim one participant share. And so every single year when income is reported to the AFM, they need to allocate, they are going to count the number of participants who actively have a claim on each sound recording to make their allocation. So if the three of us, me, Gina, and Stacy, were the three non-featured performers that contributed to a sound recording, there would be three participants, so as long as all three of us made that claim. If one out of the three of us does not make the claim, the AFM is going to allocate and then reserve, I believe, three years to make a back claim to see if there are any other participants that need to claim. And if there's not, then you had your three-year window. And the AFM receives the money, the royalty, from Sound Exchange. And Sound Exchange pays 5% of what they collect to the AFM to distribute to the non-featured performers. Now, is that 5% per participant? Or is that 5% in total divided 
between the three of us. 5% in total divided by the three of us. So every single year, Stacy mentioned, satellite radio stations are going to pay sound exchange. And whatever they pay sound exchange, sound exchange is going to consider 50% of that, as we've mentioned in previous podcasts, the rights holder share. And then the other 50% is gonna be considered performer share. Now, out of that 50% for the artist share, the performer share, they're gonna take 5% of that. And that's what we're actually talking about here. So 5% of the overall 100%, 10% of the performer share is gonna be paid to the AFM. That money is like your pool that can be claimed and divided by the number of participants. Is that the same in the UK, Gina? The splits are, I believe, 65% for the main artist, 35% for the non-featured. But if there was one non-featured performer on a recording, they wouldn't get the whole 35%. They would only ever get the maximum of 7% for an allocation. Is there any way to include them as for extra roles extra instruments so if say Paul McCartney, no wow no, because Harsh. It's, it's one role per artist in the uk so right. as i said yes claim everything so even though you know people might say but why i'm only going to get one payment in the uk no that is correct but you may get additional payments from other societies yeah and, and maybe yeah you've got and a maybe that's account. And that explains why you need to put your family on as session players and backing vocalists. Yeah. Keep the money in <laughs> the family. Just, yeah, if they can uh, stand in the corner and play a tambourine, that's great. <laughs> or the mm. triangle. Clap, that's audible. One of the things that was just discussed is the aspects of claiming. The claiming and credits. So when you are contributing as a non-feature performer to sound recording, make sure that your credits your contribution is being listed within the liner notes because oftentimes that's how the AFM, I'm not sure how it is at PPL, but that's how they're doing their research is they are substantiating if somebody is indeed a non-featured by the liner notes, the credits that you're receiving per sound recording. Per track, not per album. If it just says backing vocals, that's not good enough evidence. You need it. Every track has to have your name and what you did. I have an artist who was on the live album of a major tour for major artists. And when the soundtrack album came out from the live tour, just had her name as backing vocals and PPL just would not listen. They would not put her on. We had to submit the video showing her singing every song. Crazy. Crazy, yes, but good news is that you can prove these things. As Stacia mentioned, sending an actual video, if you have a recording, it's pretty hard to dispute at that level. But it all boils back to the agreement. So what were you doing on the onset when you contributed? Did you get the ap appropriate documentation? Do you have the agreements? If something is missing, can you back it up with something else? And don't be embarrassed to bring forms into the recording session and have the featured artist sign it right then and there. It's business. It's all business. It's so much easier because when you, for example, with PPL, when you have contributed on a recording and you want to ensure that you're going to be paid for that contribution, you can claim your share of that. You have membership with the society. You log into the database. You track down that recording and you complete the necessary steps. You select the box that relates to the recording and you identify yourself as the artist and the role that you've made and so on. That goes off to PPL who will assess it. And it may well be that in the next two weeks, you receive an email from PPL asking for evidence to back up the fact that you've made that claim. Now, if you've got that document in place, it's so much easier. You can just send it straight back to PPL, who will review it and say, yes, claim approved. If you don't have that documentation, there are various other means that you can provide that evidence to PPL, but it takes so much longer. So my suggestion now is if you've performed with anybody, then yes, get that signed off and written down. And it's so much easier all the time when you actually come to claim. With non-featured performers, can we say every single country reserves a certain percentage for non-featured performers? The yes. percentages differ. 
and the only yeah because as far as i'm concerned i think it's just sound exchange is the the one that doesn't actually pay for non-featured artists although it does via the fund most societies it's in a single cmo but some societies have separate cmos for featured and non-featured in most countries in the world it's the same cmo for featured artists and non-featured artists but there are other countries besides the U.S. that have separate societies for the non-featured and the featured. And by CMO, we mean collection management organizations. In the U.S., if you're a non-featured performer, it's synonymous with being a producer. However, if you are a non-featured performer and you are not a producer, you cannot submit an LOD to receive featured artist featured performer share of income from sound exchange. So you are excluded from that 45% artist share at sound exchange. Whereas if you are a non-featured, but you're also a producer, you're able to receive a percentage of that income at sound exchange via an LOD. Letter of direction. Letter of direction. Yeah. And here's a top tip for US non-featured performers. Go to Google and search AFM royalties search because you can just type in your last name and they'll tell you if they're holding money for you that you never collected. And also you don't have to be a member of the musicians union. Do you need to be an active member of the musicians union to receive payments from the fund? And the answer is no. That's a good tip. This is back end payments that's due to you. And this is in the realm of $60 million every single year that's allocated from sound exchange to the AFM. So this is additional income that you are potentially leaving on the table. So in the UK, you cannot waive this royalty. It is yours by right, and no matter what agreement you sign, you keep it. You cannot say, I give up, I won't take it. In the US, if it's a work for hire, or they have a specific waiver, is it valid? Can it be waived in the US? It's a flat fee buyout. Is that a valid waiver? That's in terms of receiving payments on behalf of the artist. So that's from the record label, royalties to the artist, that's sound exchange royalties to the artist. The AFM is not royalties to the artist. So the AFM is completely separate. Even if you say that within the contract, that's what it's typically referring to. The AFM is not featured artist income whatsoever. If actually, if a featured artist tries to be a participant within a sound recording, they're gonna get denied because they're going against what this fund was set up for. Create a list for yourself of all the recordings on which you have made a contribution and then go and search them on the database. Don't just look for the main version, look for all the different versions associated to that main recording and claim every single one of them. And again, don't just claim the one role, as we've said, claim every single role that you have featured on. If you played guitar on Bootylicious, and Bootylicious is sampled in Today, Tomorrow, and Forever, and they only sample your guitar part, you're entitled to your neighboring rights on Today, Tomorrow, Forever, because you played that guitar. So keep checking and always check for derivatives, check for samples, check for new releases, check for compilations, entitled on every single track. Thanks for stopping by. If you learned something today, come and join IFR. Be a member of ifr.co.uk and click on the member join now button.